Good morning everyone and welcome to this day in the life vlog if you're new around here My name is Sharon and I'm a trainee clinical psychologist and today I'm going to be taking you all to work with me now I won't be able to show you everything But I'm going to try my best to fill you in on what it's like to be a trainee clinical psychologist at the moment I'm on my older adults placement where I'm partly based on the inpatient wards both dementia and functional wards And then also in the memory assessment service where I'm doing neuropsychological assessments, so it's a big amalgamation of different tasks and, and different kinds of clients and presentations that I'm working with at the moment So I thought it would be good to take you all along with me. So it's currently 7.15. I need to leave for work um, I'm actually commuting from London to Essex because I'm moving yet again Don't know why I do this to myself. I am in the process of moving so I'm back at home for now So I gotta get a move on. So before I head to work I thought I'd show you what I'm wearing because I know that used to stump me when I was an AP, I never knew what to wear, but today I'm just wearing some black jeans and this top, which is from Uniqlo. Now, I don't know if I want it tucked in or not, I think I will have it tucked in, um, but it's just a lightweight top, and I think with the jeans it's not too formal, I don't like being too formal for work. So if I'm wearing a smart top, then I'll wear something more casual on the bottom and then vice versa, but yeah, that's what I'm wearing today. I'll probably pair them with just some black flat pumps. Um, just because, you know, being on an inpatient ward, I don't like to wear my heeled boots, they're noisy and, you know, you can't move around the best in them. So yeah, that's what I'm wearing today, let's get going. Right, so we have just got to work and I'm about 15 minutes early, which is great because it means that I get a parking spot because NHS parking is the absolute bane of everyone's existence. If you know, you know, and I'm so sorry that you know. Um, but yeah, I'm probably going to head in now so that I can get a desk because again, that's one of the things that's quite short in the NHS, especially in psychology departments, is that there just aren't enough desks and so we all hot desk and sometimes there's not enough room and then it, it gets a bit problematic so I'm going to go in find myself a desk or maybe even a room if possible because I've got some phone calls to make this morning um, and some assessments to do so if I can find my own room that would be great um, but I'll probably catch up with you guys properly at lunchtime but I'll try and film some bits and do a voiceover so you guys know what I get up to. The first thing that I did when I got in was this bit of reading which I've been meaning to do. So this is about psychological adjustment to illness and injury and I thought this was quite important especially when working with people who have just received a diagnosis of dementia or mild cognitive impairment. After that bit of reading it's now time to get on with the real work. So my first job on the to-do list was to select people for the mild cognitive impairment group that I'm going to be running. So the inclusion criteria for this is people having a diagnosis of mild cognitive impairment for their reassessment to not be too soon in the near future and also if they have opted in previously. So when I give them a call I'm basically outlining the content of the group, what we'll expect from them and whether they still want to join the group and whether they can attend face to face. If they say yes they'd still like to join then I book them in for their pre-group screening assessment. So I'm just about to go into the ward, so before I go into the ward I need to make sure that I've read up on any notes for my client, things that may have changed, changes to risk, um, and what their presentation has been like on the ward recently. So I'm going to try to do some mood measures with them today, so I need to make sure I've got those printed out and bring them on with me. And then another thing that you have to make sure you have when working on inpatient ward is a, well to be fair, in, in most settings um, you should be carrying one of these around, but especially in an inpatient setting your personal safety alarm now i think there's a massive stigma around people being in an inpatient setting and then being um violent and things like that i've never had an experience um of that in any kind but it's just something to be mindful of especially when people first come onto the ward um they might be a bit more agitated and distressed obviously because they're in a new setting it's completely understandable um and so it is just better to have that on you just in case so what I'm going to do is I'm going to pause the video here and then editing Shaz is going to talk you through the measures that I use with this particular client um, and kind of why I use a different mood measure in comparison to something that I would use with a younger client. So I'm going to be using the geriatric depression scale, the geriatric anxiety scale and then also a measure of attachment um, and I'll explain kind of why um, when I'm editing the video. 
On the screen now, what you'll see are two really common mood measures. So we've got the PHQ-9 and the GAD-7. Now the PHQ-9 measures symptoms of depression, whereas the GAD-7 measures symptoms of anxiety. Now what you'll notice here is that many of the items on both of these scales actually measure physical symptoms. Now this is completely valid when you're using it with a younger population, but when working with older adults we have to remember that many older adults do have trouble sleeping, many older adults are restless and that might be because they're experiencing pain, not because they're feeling anxious. So that's why I've chosen to use the Geriatric Depression Scale and the Geriatric Anxiety Scale instead. These measures are less reliant on physical symptoms and so are therefore more valid for people of an older age. So, it's currently lunchtime but I'm having some pesto pasta um, and I've pretty much done most of my like patient contact this morning so this afternoon is going to be neuropsych supervision um, and then I'm going to be practicing doing a neuropsychological assessment with one of the other trainees who's on placement with me and then do all of my notes and like admin stuff so pretty chill afternoon um, which I'm very excited about. Now time for notes. Now in my previous vlog I went through my note taking system. I use the SABAR technique and there are loads of different ways to write your clinical notes out there but that's just the one that I have chosen and it's working really well for me. But basically in this you're going to outline the situation, the background to the client and then what activity you did with them, so the content of your session and then your recommendations or your plan for the next session. It's also really important to highlight any changes to their risk profile in your notes. I am back home now. I don't think I actually got that much footage while I was at work just because I was quite busy and there were other people in the office. So what I did do was I went and finished up an assessment with someone on the functional older adult ward. Um, so that was just me doing some mood measures which we went through earlier. And then I did some pre-group assessment slash screening for a group that I'm going to be running which is a group for people with the diagnosis of mild cognitive impairment so it's primarily a psychoeducational group which will run for six weeks um, basically outlining what mild cognitive impairment is and risk factors associated with um, an MCI diagnosis progressing into dementia and then also strategies to help manage memory difficulties so I was basically ringing people up today, seeing if they wanted to be part of the group and doing a small outcome measure with them about what it's like to live with a diagnosis of mild cognitive impairment um, and then kind of giving them some information about the actual group. That took out a big chunk of my morning. And then after that I had my neuropsychological assessment supervision. So. Um, on Fridays, that's kind of my neuropsych assessment day, where soon enough I'll be doing full dementia assessments, which is similar to what I used to do in my old assistant psychologist role, but now I'll be doing it, you know, in a different service, a different battery of tests. Um, and so I had that supervision where we were scoring up an assessment that my supervisor did, um, and it was quite useful, you know, to see how to score it up, and then... I practiced doing the battery with the trainee, with another trainee who's also on placement with me and that was an interesting experience actually to kind of reflect on how clients must feel when they're sat doing this really extensive neuropsychological assessment for an hour and a half and like guys it's really difficult, like, the stuff we ask people to do um, is is really like quite challenging and I think it's quite important for us to actually sit down and do either you know the questionnaires the tasks the homework i think it's important for us to do it before we ask our clients to do it because you know how can you expect someone to complete a homework when you haven't even tried it yourself and you don't know the barriers or the challenges or the vulnerabilities that arise from doing that homework so yeah i thought doing the neuropsych test practice as a client was really beneficial um and that was it really. I wrote up my notes for the people I contacted and the client that I saw on the ward and that was my day. I hope you guys found this vlog useful. Um, I'm hoping to do a little bit more but I, I feel like I always say this and then training gets, gets away with me but thank you so much for sticking around and if you're new around here please subscribe for more content like this, psychology, vlogs, 
um, career and all of that, it means the world when you guys subscribe. So I'd love for you to join the crew um, and also give this video a like if you liked it. So until next time guys, I will see you later. Bye.